So today, out of these 10 cordless heat guns, we're gonna to try to determine if one $220 heat gun is truly better than a $50 heat gun from Harbor Freight. One thing I'd like to point out before we get started is the nozzles that come with each heat gun here. You can see right off the bat, Milwaukee, yeah, you're spending around $150 just for the tool and you're not getting any nozzles. So keep that in mind with the Makita having the most at four, and then you can see here the DeWalt has two, which are the same as the two that come with the Craftsman, which makes sense. And then the Ryobi here coming in with two. The cone style is a wide mouth, same as the Cobalt here, which is the same as the Ryobi. Then we look at the Hercules, we have three, and we have a small focus cone which is the same for the Greenworks, and then the Bauer there coming in with only two, which is the cone, and of course the curve adapter there for heat shrink. So try to keep a constant here. All except for two are fitted with a normal two amp hour battery. The two that are not, of course, are the ones from Harbor Freight here, the Hercules with a 2.5, and then the Bauer here with a 1.5 amp hour battery. Also for comparison, we're gonna test them with different batteries. So in this case, a DeWalt power stack to see if there's higher performance with this versus something like this rigid max output four amp hour. So before we go into testing, let's just take a look at the charge times here. As you can see, the Craftsman did the worst. Now, again, this would be with a two amp hour battery and a normal charger you get in the kit with, of course, the exception of the Hercules there and the Bauer. DB here, if you're interested, the Makita here was the loudest and the Craftsman was the quietest. Most manufacturers rate these heat guns with, of course, max temp, and then also CFM, or cubic feet per minute. Now, where this tends to get a little tricky is what they don't tell you. We have to take into account the actual opening, the area of flow out of the heat gun. Now, this varies depending on manufacturer. So to do this, the meter, we're gonna set it to feet per minute. We're gonna calculate the area here to give us the CFM. Now I have this set two inches from the meter here, and I'm also gonna add this nozzle on here, and then we'll get that feet per minute, and we already know this opening, so we can calculate it there as well. CFM. So Craftsman having the lowest CFM of just barely over six with the M18 and the Makita coming in at eight. So here we're going to look at the temp without a nozzle being one inch away from the temperature probe. Then I'm going to go ahead and add the nozzle with the tip right up close. We're going to see what the max temp we could get with the regular battery and I'm also gonna use high performance batteries if I do have them, and we're gonna see if that makes a difference. So here's the highest temp, giving the gun only 30 seconds to warm up with the DeWalt winning this and the Bauer coming in last. So here we have max temp. When you look at this data, one thing is really clear that higher amp hour batteries or higher performance batteries do matter. So all the way over on the right hand side, you can see there the temperature max. The only one that didn't perform better with the high output four amp hour battery is that rigid. But the rest, if we had the high amp hour battery, it definitely performed better with that battery. Now you've seen all the data. Let's actually do something practical here. So we got the shield on here for heat shrink. Again, this being a Bauer, we have no lock. So I zip tied the trigger and we do have the five amp battery.
So here we have the Milwaukee, same deal, no trigger lock. Also had to steal the nozzle from the Ryobi box. For some reason, Milwaukee, you don't get nozzles with. The DeWalt here does have a trigger lock and we are going to run it with the power stack. Then we have the Makita here. This also has a trigger lock. So one thing to point out, if you guys are wondering, you know, height-wise, you can see right there, the highest would it being the Makita, of course the shortest here with the Rigid. Now, from the data, what did we conclude? 
One thing we can say across the board almost is that high performance batteries matter. Whether it be the power stack or just a four amp hour battery in general, they do matter when it comes to these heat guns in performing at their highest level. The only thing where that was not true was for some reason with this rigid max output four amp hour. Ran the test three times, still came to the same conclusion. For some reason, we could not get that max temperature out of this versus the two amp hour max output battery, which is kind of weird. But that being said, overall, if you're definitely gonna buy the Bauer or the Hercules, you need to get the five amp hour battery. That brings those performance numbers almost even at the top end. Not gonna see the performance, I don't think, of a plug-in heat gun. Now I am gonna test that in another video, but just from my experience with this, these are not this. To me, if you're buying one of these, you're gonna be doing heat shrink, you're gonna be on the road, and you're gonna need something mobile. For that sort of application, I think this is where these come in handy. Now that being said, as you probably noticed, some of these have locks and some of them do not. And in a heat shrink application, especially maybe on a bench or something like that where you can set it down, I think you want the lock. So out of these 10, only these four are gonna give you the ability to lock the gun on. So for me, the Greenworks is out, the bundle is $100, you need a bigger battery. Yes, you can buy a bigger battery, but a five amp hour battery or four amp hour battery for this is roughly $100. Cobalt, yes, it had a good high temp. Yes, it has a lock. I just, it's kind of bulky and I, I just feel, you know, it's like 80s plastic to me. Milwaukee, no lock, no nozzles, almost the most expensive, and the performance really wasn't that great. So definitely gonna have to put this in third to last. Ryobi, decently priced if you're running the OnePlus platform. You know, I don't think you can go wrong. Just be aware the temperature wasn't the greatest, but it's also not the most expensive gun here. Rigid, new to the game, decent price. Um, I like that it has a lock so you can lock it on. Don't really understand why it didn't perform really well with, again, this four amp hour high performance. But in general, I think if you're running the rigid platform, you know, it's gonna do quite well. Craftsman, quite impressive, not gonna lie. Uh, one thing I will say, I would have liked to seen the lock. Again, yes, it's owned by Stanley Black & Decker, so it's almost a direct copy here of the DeWalt, as you can see with the trigger assembly, but they didn't incorporate the lock. I can understand it, this is supposed to be more towards a homeowner. I would have liked to seen what this would do with a four amp hour battery, I would say the same performance as the DeWalt here. So definitely a good pick if you're running the Craftsman line. DeWalt, yeah, overall, like it. I like that you can run the power stack. You know, you got the high low, very good performance. Heat wise, not so much CFM, but I mean, I'd like to see what this will do when we get the bigger power stack, hopefully sooner than later. Bauer and the Hercules, kind of the same deal to me. Definitely need to run the five amp hour battery. Performance is about the same at that point. I don't think you can beat the price if you're running one of these. So yeah, the only real drawback, you don't have the lock. So I do like the ability here to quick detach the nozzles when they're hot. Number one, gonna have to give it to the Makita here. Almost highest temp, highest CFM. You have your high-low, you have your quick detach for the nozzle, and you have your variable speed in the back. Now you also do have the latch right here, so if you want to hang it on something. Overall, that's going to be my number one pick. So yeah, there's my uh, recommendation in order here. Pretty close between these two. If you're looking for a budget gun, you know, right here with Hercules and Bauer, don't think you can go wrong. And then of course, you're already running rigid, lifetime warranty. So, so hopefully you uh, found this video useful. I know it's a lot of data, but at the end of the day, you know, they are relatively close. 
but the key here to me is the features. So thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully I'll catch you on another one. So I know some of you guys want to see all the data. So I threw this table together. Of course, you can see the model, the kit number, if there's a kit available, where it's made, if it comes with nozzles, if it has that quick release there so you can easily detach the nozzle when it's hot, if it has a warranty. Uh, if you know the Makita warranty, let me know below. That one I couldn't find, again, the lock-on feature so you can use it hands-free, speed adjustment, temperature adjustment, and then also the weight there with a two amp hour battery. Runtime with a two amp hour for the most part battery. Again, the Bauer had 1.5 and the Hercules had a 2.5. So that being said, the Craftsman was last and the Hercules was the longest. So this table is just showing current cost of just the tool and the kit versus what they say the max temp is.